Hey guys, Moose here. Welcome to another episode of Life is Feudal Forest Village. Uh, we are starting over again after that mass die-off we had in the last episode. I am feeling much better. No longer is the pinch nerve in my back quite such an issue. Still not really 100%, but I'm feeling alright. I'm better. I'm much, much better. So, like, I'm pretty much 100% functional at this point. I just don't feel fantastic I guess okay so here's an interesting thing that I gotta comment on capacity for five corpses that seems like shit unless they go away I don't like that okay so where where did I read it um, Okay, so I read somewhere, I forget where, but I read somewhere that, oh, you need a pyre because if you don't burn the dead, it, you know, you have plague outbreaks. And it was specifically, whatever it was, it wasn't associated, it wasn't the pyre's tooltip or anything, but it was a tooltip that said, hey, you need this. And it specifically mentioned the pyre. That is why I've never built crypts, because it specifically said, hey, you need a pyre to prevent the plague. Not, hey, you need a way to deal with the dead to prevent the plague. You need a pyre, specifically. So, I got a comment that said crypts are better than pyres, so I'm going to be trying out crypts now, because that's... I don't know, I'm a little bit salty that I was maybe stupid enough to take the game at its word when it said that you could, you know, you needed a pyre, but whatever. My fault. I should have assumed why would why would a crypt be in the game if it didn't work, but I thought it would work. And I'm a little I'm a little salty about that. To tell the truth. <clears throat> Looks like we're doing okay here though. Is there anything I want to reduce? No, I think we're fine. Research coming along nicely. Not started yet, that's fine. It'll get there. We need to be careful about where people die. Just outside of range of any of the pyres. Great, okay, well, that's fantastic. No one's sick yet, so that's fine, I guess. It seems like the radius is the same, but you can deal with big influxes of corpses better with a crypt from the look of it. I'm really questioning how long it takes for them. Like, surely it's not just like, okay, well, you get five corpses and then you have to deconstruct it. I'm assuming it's actually like, there's five slots and they decay over time. And then once it's done, now you can put another one in that slot. I have to assume that's how it works, because if it doesn't work that way, that's really, really stupid. It doesn't make any sense for it to not work that way. But you never know. Weirder things have happened. So yeah, we're going to be real real careful about watching where people die right now. This looks like a little spot where it was didn't have coverage. But usually they're not going to die there, I don't think. Doesn't, yeah, we avoided any kind of, okay, here's one, here's one over here. That doesn't have any coverage. And that's in a frickin' barn, too, so... I could see a plague outbreak happening there. I kinda don't like the way this works with the radiuses. I kinda wish it was just if you have something... Like, that. Stonehearth had the same issue, and this is... something I really don't like about games like this when they do it this way. Radiuses make sense for certain things. They make sense for hunters. They make sense for stuff like that. That's fine. I get that. I understand it. It's acceptable. I don't like radiuses for other things. And this Anno 20, 2070 or 2020 or whatever it was, the one that came out a long time ago, I played it. And I got really frustrated with it because it's like, oh, hey, yeah, you can build everything to the grid, but your everything has a circle radius for what it affects. And like this, 
where you know you have this radius how am i supposed to like you there's no optimum coverage and you're always going to get screwed on some part of it and it's just really frustrating i don't i don't like games that work that way i think it's a bad mechanic um so, like I said, sometimes it's not a problem. Hunters are a really good example of that. Things that make sense for having range, like watchtowers like this, yeah, makes sense. I'm okay with that. I don't really like that it's so tiny, but yeah, fine. I get it. It makes sense, but like, this is stupid in my opinion. <laughs> Anything that's supposed to affect something else that's built on a grid, then you make it circular. It's Circles and squares don't go together. But do give me If you want me to build in squares, give me square area of effects or don't give me area effects at all in the case of something like a pyre like really you're going to tell me that you can't go burn that body because it was two feet outside of the radius of this fucking circle like that's really what you're going to tell me i don't like that i'm not a fan of it so personal opinion maybe whiny but i i'm not a fan of that kind of mechanic i'm just not and i would much rather have it work differently and I feel like that may be well this does fit perfectly why didn't it fit perfectly the last time I tried to do this did I screw up the spacing somehow oh whatever and 12 of these I don't need these I just want them there so that when I do need them they're available uh, just so we can get metal if we need it later we're not really getting much ore at the moment so it's fine but I feel like a lot of games like this, Stone, and this is my major gripe with Stonehearth, they seem to have a tremendous amount of difficulty with distance. And it makes me think that basically everything they do, and it's very much the same thing here in Life is Feudal Forest Village, it seems as though they're not capable of doing anything outside of a certain range of their house or whatever whatever marker you want to use, whether it's their place of work or something else. Like, the bottom line is they have a lot of trouble traveling long distances. And to me, I think in both cases, we're already talking about a relatively small map. It's basically an RTS. So why... Why is it so problematic? Sorry, I'm trying to find the crypt here. There it is. Why is it such a problem for them to to just have them go wherever? Why does it have to be basically like a radius? And I, I think of it as a radius because it's distance from the individual person, which I think is linear. It's not necessarily... Um, I mean, it, it is a pathfinding issue, but I mean, it's not, it's not a square. It's not saying, well, if it's this many tiles, I don't think that's it. Because they don't really move in squares. They can run diagonally. Like you can see that a little bit here where there's sort of like going like that. So if that's the case, why I just don't I don't like it. I, I feel like it shouldn't be so proximity based. People travel long distances all the time. And I, I feel like and maybe this is a leap in logic that I shouldn't be making, but I feel like some of the issue with with the the radiuses i feel like the radiuses are the same reason that um they have the pathfinding issue because they basically consider things within a radius and i don't like that i feel like that doesn't i i don't know the programming in, in the back end i don't know how any of it works but i'm not a fan of that i it feels kind of like it, it Take something where, hey, you know, this is supposed to be a semi-realistic game. Like, hey, you know, you're growing animals, animals need food, you feed them. They give you resources, whatever they are, you know, there's fine. There's an element of realism to a game like this. Stone Hearth, maybe less so. And then to have it be like, well, you know, they're two feet too far away to be able to do that, and we're not going to actually tell you anything about that, it's just they won't do it. And you just kind of have to notice that they're not doing what you told them to do. It's really gamey, and it kind of sucks, in my opinion. I don't like it. Are we pulling it out? No, we're putting it in here, right? Yeah, okay. That's probably enough. Take everything from here and put it over here. It's a good one to put it into. But yeah, I just, I don't like it. I feel like they could do a much better job than that. I, it just seems 
very, very dumb to me. Why do, holy, okay, no, no, I understand now. I was like, why do I need 24 builders? What the hell happened? But it's all this stuff up here. So that, that actually makes total sense. So yeah, uh, you know, that's just my opinion, really. I don't like when games do that. I feel like everything I said, it kind of breaks the sense of, it, it, it's gamey. I don't want to say it, it ruins the sense of realism or whatever, because, yeah, okay, bird's eye view over a town where I'm telling him to cut down trees with a with a drag click-and-drag cursor. Like, I get it. This is a video game I'm playing. It's not like I'm sitting here saying, oh, like, wow, that, the texture on this chicken, it's so realistic. I, I feel like I'm actually in the town. No, I'm not stupid. Like, I get it. But it's just this l dumb little thing that, that sucks, in my opinion. And I, I feel like if they're going to let me play on a map this big, then they should make it so that they, it works within that map. It's not like they're letting me generate an entire world and it's like, oh, well, if you tell them to do something on the other side of the planet, they're going to run over there and starve to death. That's not really what's happening here. So it just feels kind of stupid. There's, there's a lot of things like that where I feel like this game could be a little bit better balanced, a little bit better set up. It's a good game. And I would say this is probably the best example of this kind of game on the market right now. And there's another one coming out on the 28th, I think, which is Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to be picking that up pretty much instantaneously, as long as it's not like $60. And it's coming out in early access, but I, I have high hopes for it. I caught it during the Steam sale. It wasn't for sale, but it was like highlighted as something I might like because I basically... Because this is what gets views on my channel, I'm like almost exclusively looking for games like this so that's one i forget the name of it. it was like something with a v i think and there's a couple others that i also actually picked up during the steam sale that are similar kinds of games that i'll pick up but all those aside having not played any of those which is maybe unfair to those games i do think this is probably yeah okay so it does prevent plague all right so i must have read something that confused me then oh whatever but yeah, having not played any of those, I feel like of what I've played, this is definitely the best example of a town builder. Or town, you know, whatever you want to call it, city builder, it doesn't matter. I think this is better than Banished. I think Banished was a superb game that felt like it was half finished. I really feel like that game could have been a lot better than it was. Uh, but this is presently, in my mind, the best example of this kind of game. It's good. It's not bad. It definitely has flaws, and I'm, I'm zeroing in on those because that, I feel like, to a degree, is my job. Because this is pretty much... I think if you were going to describe this game pretty much the way you'd want to do it, is you just say, okay, look, this is Banished. You're going to get everything that you would expect to get out of Banished out of this. Here are the flaws it has. And most of those flaws center, I think, very much around... And this is maybe a little bit disappointing, and I think this is where you get into a kind of a little bit more interesting of an analysis about how this game was made. What we, If you were going to look at this and say, what's the big difference between this and Banished? I think if, if I was asked that question, what I would have to say is... I don't necessarily feel like it has more content. I do feel like it probably does, but that's not really different to me. I don't see that as a major differentiating factor. Because at the end of the day, you're, you're still managing the same whatever resources. It's like, okay, you need to make sure you have food, and I guess not water doesn't matter, but, you know, whatever. Like, you need food, heating, clothing, tools, whatever. It, it's pretty much the same. The main thing that I would say differentiates this between, or between this and Banished, the main differences, is Banished... As far as villager management, there isn't really much there. They just kind of do their thing. You build the infrastructure within which they work. And I think you assign them to tasks. Like you'd say, okay, same. you had this window right here. But that was kind of it. I think this is a little bit more in-depth as far as distance. You know, the villagers are much more simulated. They're, they're more real. Distance matters proximity matters for efficiency in their work there's mood you know things that i don't think i remember ban i haven't played banished in a very long time that's a disclaimer here so i could be forgetting some aspects of it but i don't think it had a lot of that 
I think Banish was much more hands-off when it came to the villagers, where he, whereas here you actually have to be very like aware of what's going on and you know, hey, are, are my houses close enough to the farm so that they can actually do things in a timely manner? It's it's more time sensitive, and I guess that would be the other mechanic that's big is the. I think Banished had a much more forgiving or un irrelevant um, seasonal cycle, I guess. I don't know, I can't really remember. So, the reason why I was saying I think that's kind of interesting and maybe in some ways damning is I would say almost every negative that I would have with this game comes from that. It comes from what makes it different from Banished. Except for the seasonality. The seasonality is fantastic. But the all the issues I have with the game are the things about making villagers their own people and actually like kind of simulating a little, a little bit more closely than Banished maybe does. I still think this is definitely a better game than Banished. But I think there's a lot more work. I feel basically the reason why I think it's a little bit damning and interesting is you could you could very easily spin that to say, well, look, this is the one thing they did on their own that was different, and they they fucked it. But I don't necessarily think that they fucked it. I think it's it's good, but needs work. I guess is the way that I put it. You can't make anything because I'm out of hide. Are you seriously already? Oh no, we're out of flax. Okay, well that explains that. That's, you know what, we got plenty of clothing. I'll deal with flax next year. Go down to four people, that's fine. So you could you could turn that into a really damning statement about the development and the issues this game has and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I would totally understand going that way with this and, and having a serious issue with it and claiming that, you know, hey, look, this isn't really that good because they had this one thing and they, they kind of blew it a bit, and I definitely think that that's the main, the main thing holding this game back in my mind, is the issues that surround the villagers, in individually. I'm, I'm coming over to the feeling that food consumption is a little bit too high. I definitely kind of agree with a, a commenter who we had a, maybe 10 or 20 episodes ago who was saying basically that and that you need to mod it to make it better. And I, I kind of agree with that, but I'm very hesitant to go that route because I feel like a lot of the time that would just remove the challenge entirely. But I totally understand that. And I kind of agree with where that's coming from. There's some clipping on the models here. That's not good. Too much overhang on the, uh, on the model there. I get, so, I really get where that's coming from. It makes total sense to me. Are they not using the crypts? Yeah, they're not using them. That's, I mean, fine. I'm fine with that. Pyres are better, ideally. Unless I'm totally wrong. I, I just don't know if the corpses decay in there or not. We'll see, I guess. But, yeah, I, I don't really think of it as that much of a damning thing against the developers here. I think... It's a lot more complex than that, and while I definitely agree that... Well, I mean, I'm the one who said it. It's not like I'm talking to anyone here. I would definitely say that... Pretty much all the negatives that I can think of with this game definitely come from... The villager aspect of it, more than anything. Which, to be fair, that's a very big aspect of the game. But the whole, you know, hey, we're not going to do it because it's too far away, but we're also not going to give you any indication that we're not going to do it, aside from just not doing it. If you give them a task that's too far away from where the housing is. That bugs me. Uh, the food balance, I think, definitely needs work. It, they could flush it out a little bit more. Mood is not really... They don't really do a good job of illustrating... If, if mood is an issue. I'm still not even sure if mood is an issue or not. But if it is, I'd love to have some kind of indication that it is. I think watchtowers versus hunters need balancing because... I don't see why you would ever build a hunting lodge at this point. It seems like you're just better off with watchtowers, universally. I mean, the radius is smaller, but who cares? What, it doesn't take manpower to, you know... That's your, that's your main driving resource in this game, so... Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's some things that maybe need work. 
which hopefully they're going to work on. I don't know. It seems like maybe they've kind of slowed down the production. I'd probably, I'd say rating is a much bigger issue than anything else, if not for the fact that it never happens anymore. I think we've had one raid in the last 30 or 40 episodes, so that doesn't really matter. Other than that, I can't really think of any negatives. It seems it's it's a pretty damn good game overall. It's just, if, if I was going to say, here's what the issues are, those would be them. And if I was going to change the game, that's pretty much how I'd do it. I'd start, I'd basically, I think you need to rework the way villagers work. And just make them, make it more like an RTS, where you don't really have control. I get, well, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense. But I think you have to... It's time to end the episode, so I'm going to end it momentarily here. But I think you have to extend the day-night cycle so that they have more time to do their job, and you also have to make them consume very slightly less food. So you have to kind of drag it out a little bit further. And maybe day-night doesn't matter, you can just have them stay out longer. But you need to kind of extend their cycle so that travel time is less of an issue. Because right now, I feel like there's no winning. Travel time just sucks. There's a lot of issues surrounding it, whether it's getting to the farm and doing their job, or taking stuff to the barn, or any number of different things. The, the travel time, including getting to distant projects that they need to work on, it just it limits the game a lot. And I don't think the game is set up very well to handle like spread out sen uh, settlements. So it's not like you can just say, oh yeah, just build another house closer to that and just like chain houses over to where you want to build and you're fine. I don't think you can really do that comfortably. Because then are they close enough to food to go get it? Well, now you need to build basically a whole new independent town over there and oh, how do you gauge what resources they're lacking when you have everything summed up into this total thing? And it just, I, I don't think it's very good. So I think there's definitely a lot of work they could do there, but that is all we have time for today. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join us in the next one as well. If you did enjoy it, you can come by twitch.tv slash electronic moose on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, 6 to 8 p.m. PST, 9 to 11 p.m. EST. Schedule's probably going to change a little bit, but I have no idea how going into December. We shall see. And you can also follow me on Twitter to see when I'm going to go live at electronic moose. But if you prefer to just watch the videos, I appreciate that all the same. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.